All right, I'm going to answer a letter here from a guy named Mike. Start out here. It says, Brian, I just want to extend my gratitude to you for your great work and for allowing the Lord to use you as, a, as his tool. God has helped me so much through you in just a week's time, pulling the wool from over my eyes to finally see the truth. The church I went to, Lake Point in Rockwell, Rockwall, Texas, gave me an ESV study Bible when I told them I didn't have a Bible back before I was saved. How wicked. Yeah, a lot of these places will do that. I've already learned so much from God through you. Might I, though, offer my take on the mark of the beast? I know you think it may be a chip of some sort. I can definitely see that. But I believe God may have re revealed to me what it is through another brother in Christ. I could, it could be a combination of both, however. I'd like to see what you think. If you can look at the verses below, I feel that we might be able to see what the mark of the beast is, which I believe to be the seal of a blatant rejection of God's commandments by what a person believes. The mark would actually be in their forehead and their frontal lobe, the area of the brain that allows for a person to make the decision to go against God. Okay, go to Exodus chapter 13, verse 9. Um, I have heard this thing before, and I don't agree with it, but, you know, I'll tell you why here in a minute. Um, and, I, and I have considered it. I'm, I'm going to be fair, and I'm going to be honest, though. I, I have considered it, but I don't agree with it. And I'll show you why I don't agree with it here in just a minute. Exodus chapter 13, verse 9. And it shall be for a sign unto thee upon thine hand, and for a memorial between thine eyes, that the Lord's law may be in thy mouth. For with a strong hand hath the Lord brought thee out of Egypt. Okay? Now let's go to verse 16. Jump down to verse 16. And it shall be a token upon thine hand, and for frontlets between thine eyes, and for by strength of hand the Lord brought us forth out of Egypt. Okay, um, this is just saying it's a it's a symbolic thing, a sign there for the Jewish people. This how does this relate to the mark of the beast? Well, there's a thing there in the forehead. And, yeah, but wouldn't that be the opposite? The Lord's doing this. Satan's doing the mark of the beast. I'm going to show you about that here, just a little bit. But let's go next to Deuteronomy, chapter six, verse nine. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 9. And thou shalt write up them upon the posts of thy house and on thy gates. I got that right, didn't I? Yeah. Okay, that's kind of a, not really proven a whole lot there. Um, Deuteronomy 11, verse 18 through 19. Therefore shall ye lay up these my words in your heart and in your soul, and bind them for a sign upon your hand, that they may be as frontlets between your eyes. And ye shall teach them your children, speaking of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. It's funny because some of the, uh, I don't remember the type of Jew, but the, I want to say Sephardic, but I don't know. I'd have to look that up. But, you know, you, these Jews, they have the thing wrapped around the, you know, like the, you know, leather looking thing wrapped around their arm and then they have like a little box there and then they do the same thing on their head, you know. They're taking a very literal reading of this passage of scripture. So the idea here is, well, um, it's something that's in your mind. So therefore, by taking the mark, you are mentally saying, I'm going to go against God kind of a thing is the way that this thing works. I think Johnny Todd was kind of saying some of that stuff I'm going to show you why it doesn't work. Go to Revelation chapter 7. What are these verses actually referring to? Deut or Exodus 13, 9, Exodus 13, 16. And Deuteronomy 6, 9 really doesn't relate to it. But I'll just go with Deuteronomy 11, verse 18 through 19. About between the frontlets of thine eyes and everything. Well, it comes from the Lord. So that's not really the mark of the beast. Revelation chapter 7. Uh... Verse 3, saying, Hurt not the earth, till neither the sea nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. In their foreheads. Then you have 144,000 Jews that are sealed in that time of Jacob's trouble. Satan counterfeits that. All right? So, um, yeah, there's, you know, you could tie in what God's going to do for the 144,000 Jews to what's going on back in Exodus and Deuteronomy. But to say that that somehow is the mark of the beast or something, and it's a, it's a thing of the will and whatever else. That doesn't work. 
go to Revelation chapter 13. People really stretch things, you know. Revelation 13, verse 16. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. Uh, it doesn't say to, you know, um, that you kind of can mentally think, it's receive a mark in their hand, in their forehead. Receive, all right, a mark. It's talking about a physical mark there. And look at this, verse 17. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Um, you're not going to be buying and selling unless you have this mark. You see? How can it be just a thing of the, the mind up here and whatever else? No, it's actually a physical mark that is going to be there, a cashless system that's going to come in in that time of Jacob's trouble. Verse 18, Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 603 score and 6. All right? Go down to Revelation chapter 14 and verse 9. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand. Now notice there's three things there. Worship the beast and his image and receive the mark. Three things. It's not just some kind of a mental thing in the frontal lobe and you're kind of thinking and you're rejecting God and whatever else. That means you've taken the mark of the beast. Nope. That's not there. It's taking a physical mark and worshiping the beast. There is a mental thing there, don't get me wrong, where you're actually saying, I'm going to worship this beast here that's claiming to be God, um, excuse me, and his image. And I believe that image is going to be a trinity type of a setup, type of a thing. Um, but that's another subject for another video. But uh, like I said, I've heard this thing before where the mark of the beast isn't really a, um, you know, implantable microchip or a tattoo or whatever else um, it's some kind of a, a thing of the will what you're doing and no it's not it really isn't uh, you're not going to be able to to you know control buying and selling by willpower uh, a decision that you've made or whatever else and um, you look into actually what an implantable microchip could be used to do where it can track and trace people and uh, I mean there's really weird high-tech stuff with it um, it's going to be an implantable microchip of some kind. Yeah, they're coming out with all kinds of new technologies, these tattoos that actually have, you know, chips implanted in them and everything else. So that's how I'd answer that. Um, it goes on to say here, and a side question, Jesus commissioned us to go out and make disciples. What would be the best way to approach this? I am discipling a group of 10th graders right now in something called fuel groups at the church I left. I will not worship there or be a part of their cult, but I feel like I can speak some sense into these kids before I get discovered. I feel like their parents force them to go out to go, but I know there are some I may be able to reach. What do you think? Well, 10th uh, graders, um, you're dealing with children that are past the age of accountability. They're not under 10 years old. Now, I don't believe in Sunday school at all. I think that that's extremely unscriptural, and I don't believe in youth groups either, honestly speaking. But these children, there, these teenagers, are definitely at the age where if they die and, you know, have not received Jesus Christ, they're going to go to hell, All right, They're not, they can't claim, well, I didn't understand sin and then I sinned against God and whatever, like a young child could. Um, and it's kind of funny, brought, kind of brought back a memory um, of uh, two brethren I used to, you know, be in fellowship with down in Pennsylvania and they, there was some youth thing in the area, and um, Brother Jesse Dulesky was one of them, and, um, you know, Bible Believers Fellowship down in Pennsylvania. And uh, him and this other brother uh, went to this, you know, Jesse had actually grown up in this youth group thing, and then, you know, later on had gotten saved and things, and, and got to talking to the, one of these people that was running this youth thing, and, oh, yeah, well, you know, it'd be great for you to come, you know, bring in your friend and things and come on in. You could help with these teenagers, they said to Jesse. So they did the same kind of a thing. They went there and they started to tell these children about, you know, these teens about the Bible version issue and about other things. And it wasn't too long until they got discovered and asked to leave. So um, I would say, yeah, go ahead. Uh, get in there and see what you can do. But don't compromise. 
that's the whole thing. You might be kind of tempted to compromise, to kind of keep things going and whatever else. Don't do it. If the Lord opens up a door for you to go there and talk to those teenagers, go and do that. But uh, don't be wishy-washy to kind of keep things going and not, you know, if, if one of the pastors or whatever takes you aside and says, oh, we really don't want you talking about that. Well, I'm going to because it's the truth. And you need to, you know, you're going to have to confront them on that. So that's up to you. If you don't want to con confront or whatever else and, and you kind of want to go along, well, then I'd say no. If you're not afraid of uh, confronting on that issue, then go for it. Um, finishes here. It says, thank you again, Brian. I appreciate your great work. Keep it going. Would you please pray that God would place true fellow followers of Christ in my life and to help me start my own house church. Also, if you post a video concerning this, please let me know how I can be praying for you. God bless man. Thank you um, very much for your kind letter. Uh, we get a lot of these letters and it's always very humbling to hear how the Lord has used this ministry um, so mightily in people's lives. And that's, it's, it's, uh, it's an honor. Um, how could you pray for me? Well, um, we have a, a number of things that we're trying to get done right now. Um, it's, God is definitely answering prayer um, very rapidly many times. <laughs> There's, there were two big decisions we were going to make. I'm not going to get into details, but two fairly big decisions we were going to make. And uh, we prayed and just said, Lord, we want you to just tell us plainly. And both things that we were going to do just fell through, completely fell through. Uh, not of our doing or whatever else. It just was a boom, answer to prayer kind of a thing. So um, I'm not going to take credit for that and uh, say, oh, it's all our holiness or righteousness or whatever else. Um, I... I depend on the prayers of my brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, just pray for the Lord's protection. Pray for the Lord's leading in our lives. Um, we, get, we get hit with a lot of attacks uh, from people. And uh, there are times when I can just, I feel, I can just feel it's really depressing and just a spirit of oppression. And, and all of a sudden I can just feel it lifting. And I think somebody's praying for me. And that means a lot. So, thank you for your letter, and I hope I answered your questions. Thanks for watching.